let's do this. Let's plug this thing in. Voila, a toaster with a screen on it. Are you surprised? Because I'm not. Just about all appliances are getting screen these days, from microwaves to ovens to refrigerators to smart countertop items like my Brava. So it was only a matter of time that it arrived on here, the Revolution Toaster. I've been toasting it for a month now, and I'm here to lay it all out. The Revolution InstaGlow R270 is the most premium toaster of its category. It helps you get the exact toast level you're looking for by choosing from a variety of bread options and settings. Plus, because of its diamond-shaped heating element, it uses less energy and cooks much faster than conventional toasters. This elevated toasting doesn't come cheap. This thing goes for $3.99. There are a couple cheaper models that are slightly more limited, but first, let's take a look at this one. The Revolution Toaster is a pretty typical size. It's got a sleek and premium finish, but you'll probably need to wipe it down a lot because this thing shows off every mark. Compared to a standard two-slice toaster, it doesn't take up much more space. There's a crumb tray at the base, which can be emptied by clicking it out of place. When the crumb tray fills up, the toaster will send you a notification on the screen letting you know that it needs to be emptied. I love this little thing. With the traditional toaster, not only do I not empty it nearly enough, but, the, but when I do, every time I manage to get crumbs everywhere. Am I alone? Its touchscreen is easy to navigate and offers some personalization options, but not as many as I would have expected. You can set two very basic clocks, either analog or digital, that's all you're getting. And this model is pre-programmed with over 30 different bread types, including the option to set it to gluten-free. You can personalize these in the settings and choose which order you want the breads to appear. The toaster's accuracy is its main selling point, and that's because when you go to toast something, you plug in a few different details. First, you're gonna choose the bread. So up top, you use these arrows and you can tap on the bread you wanna use. Then, you've got three different options. First, there's fresh. That means that whatever you're putting in here has either been sitting on the counter or has been in the refrigerator. Then you've got frozen, so this is coming out of the freezer. It knows that it's gonna take longer for it to heat. And then you've got reheat. This means that whatever you're putting in the toaster, you don't want it to toast, you just want it to heat up. Then you've got the different levels of toasting all the way from one to seven. Lastly, you've got a gluten-free option on the bottom and that will take that into account and run accordingly. Over the past month, I've been putting this toaster to the test with lots of bread, lots of toast, lots of carbs, and I've gotta say, I am impressed with how accurate the final product is in comparison to what the screen shows when you're setting it up. Got some whole wheat bread, two slices in, set it on level four, and start. And there it is. Look at that, exactly what I was looking for. This toaster does not have Wi-Fi, meaning you're not gonna be getting routine updates and it can't connect or control your smart home. What I think would take this toaster to the next level is a few things, being able to upload photos and use this as a digital picture frame when it's in standby mode, maybe having your calendar updates on here, or even the ability to activate, say, three or four smart home scenes right from the touch screen. Having smart features like that would possibly warrant the price tag for a lot more people. Now, what would make an upscale toaster even more premium? Accessories, of course, and this has two optional accessories. First, there is the warming tray. This can be used just setting it right on top and placing whatever you want to heat. What I found was I needed to run the cycle a couple of times, and specifically with the muffin, when I started eating it, it was still cold inside. So I think what I would recommend for thicker foods would be to cut them down the middle and place them uh, side by side. Next, we've got the panini press, and this is super simple to use. All you gotta do is throw in a slice of bread, put down your cheese, put down whatever meats you wanna put in there, put down some more cheese, pop that in there, and voila, you've got a panini, and it's super tasty. And fun fact, if you're not sold on the Revolution toaster, but you like the panini press, it works with traditional toasters. 
The Revolution Toaster offers the most features and functionality of any toaster I've ever seen. And if you're someone who just wants the best one out there, then it's gonna make your life easier, faster, and look really cool doing it. For someone like me, what I would hope to see out of something like this that I'm paying so much money for is for it to have smarter capabilities, whether that's Wi-Fi allowing it to have upgradable wallpapers or the ability to upload photos to it as a digital picture frame, which I think would be so much fun and would make it like the ultimate Mother's Day gift. There are cheaper models, and the main difference is those only support five types of bread and don't have program settings for the accessories. Interestingly enough, the less expensive models run at the same 1500 watts as the $400 version. So what it sounds like to me is that the less expensive toasters are dumbed down only by software. And I bet you could just work around that by finding how those settings work with other breads. That is all I've got today. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed it, give it a like. I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.